Okay, so we've seen one example of how to find concavity in inflection points by following the steps that were outlined. And now what we want to do with that is we want to combine that with everything else that we've learned so far in this class, meaning we want to combine that with graphing. Okay, so let's look at the steps to graphing all functions since we can use all of the information that we know at this point. Our steps are finding the domain, which we learned in college algebra, finding the end behavior, which we talked about in college algebra, but we found more efficient ways of limits at infinity in calculus, find the y-intercept as an algebra method, find the x-intercept as an algebra method, and now into the calculus portion of this class. Find all relative extrema, meaning maximums and minimums, and where the graph is increasing and decreasing. And remember, we do that by taking the first derivative equal to zero. Then we just learned that we do the concavity and the inflection points by setting the second derivative equal to zero. And we can plot all of that information on the graph. If we still need some extra details, which hopefully at this point we should have everything that we need, but if we need extra details, you can also plot extra points. And then last but not least, check with your graphing calculator. Okay, again, I'm the teacher, so these are the steps that I've put for you. But if I was a student, I would put your graphing calculator as step number one, so you can check each step along the way. So let's use these steps on an example. So I have the function capital F of X is equal to 3X to the fifth minus 5X to the fourth minus 1. We want to find the domain, the end behavior, the Y-intercept, the X-intercept, increasing, decreasing, maximum, and minimum, concavity and inflection points, and then we want to plot all of that information on a graph. So this would be the perfect time for you to pause the video and see if you can do this all on your own. Okay, first steps first, finding the domain. Our main concern is in a fraction where the denominator is equal to zero or where we take square roots of negative numbers. And in this problem, I don't have any fractions or any square roots, so therefore, my domain is RL number. I don't have any restrictions on this function whatsoever. Okay, next, we do the end behavior, and we do this by looking at the limits as x is approaching both positive infinity and as x is approaching negative infinity. Since this is a polynomial function, we do this by looking at the leading term test. My leading term is 3x to the fifth. It is positive odd. So that means it's going down on the left and it's going up on the right. Well, we don't know what's happening in between. That's what the rest of these steps are for. So at the right-hand side of the graph, the graph is going up forever. So that means it's going to be positive infinity. On the left-hand side of the graph, it's going down forever. So that means this one's going to be negative infinity. All right, the y-intercept, we do that by plugging zero into the function. We get out our constant term. So that means we have the ordered pair zero, negative one. Our x-intercept, we do that by setting my original function is equal to zero. And this is one where we actually might not be able to solve. So there will be times where something is just not solvable using the information that you know. And at this time, there's no way to solve this using any of the factoring or quadratic formulas or synthetic divisions or anything like that. So we're just going to have to leave this one unknown. And that's okay to do that every once in a while if there's just no way to actually solve it. Now, when we get to step number eight that says check it with the calculator, then our calculator can do that for us, and we can utilize that to help us out with this. Okay, let's move on to step number five which is increasing, decreasing, maximum, and minimum. And we do that by finding the first derivative of the function. 
So that is 15x to the fourth minus 20x to the third. We want to set this derivative equal to zero, so it would be best to factor it out. So I can take out a 5 and an x cubed. That leaves me with 3x minus 4. So when I do set this equal to zero, this part gives me the solution of x equals zero, actually three times multiplicity three. And if I set this one equal to zero, that gives me x is equal to positive four thirds. So those are the two numbers that I'm going to put on my number line. And if my domain had any restrictions, then I would need to include those there. But our domain did not have any restrictions. It is all real numbers. So I need to test points in between these here. So something less than zero, let me just do negative one. Something between zero and four thirds, which is one and one third, I can just do one. And something beyond one and one third, so let me just do two. So let me test them in here. If I take negative one and I cube it, that gives me negative one times five is a negative one. If I take negative 1 times 3, that gives me negative 3 minus 4 gives me a negative. So if I multiply these, that gives me positive, which tells me that my graph is increasing to the left of 0. Now that should be pretty obvious because on our int behavior, we said that the very left hand side of the graph is going down forever. So that should confirm with this here that it's going down forever. Okay, in the middle, if I test 1, 1 cubed times 5 gives me 1, or positive, and 3 times 1 minus 4 gives me a negative. So this is negative, so it is decreasing in between 0 and 4 thirds. Now 2, 2 cubed times 5 gives me positive, and 2 times 3, which is 6 minus 4, gives me a positive. So this one is increasing. And that also confirms with our end behavior that said it's going up on the very right-hand side of the graph. It's going up on the very right-hand side of the graph. So this tells us that our graph is increasing between negative infinity and 0 in between 4 thirds and infinity. It's decreasing between 0 and 4 thirds. It also tells us that it has a maximum when x is equal to 0. But I know that I want to graph this, so it might be best to figure out what that actual maximum is. Now this one's really easy because it was a y-intercept. We figured out that it was negative 1. So we have a maximum at the point 0, negative 1. We also know that we have a minimum at 4 thirds. So if I figure out what f of 4 thirds is, that tells me what my minimum value is. So all I need to do is plug in 4 thirds into the original function. Now, in fraction format, when I used my calculator, that gave me negative 337 over 81. So that is my official answer. But we want to use this for graphing, so we might want the approximate answer as well. So that is 1 and 1 third, or 1.3 repeating, and then approximately negative 4.16. So that is where my minimum value is. So all of this is going to help me with the graph. And I'm going to stop this video here to split it into two videos just so it doesn't get too long. And in the next video, I'll pick up right where I left off.